Come on everybody, it's time to look at an abandoned railway. I love an abandoned railway almost as much as I love a regular railway. This one's in southwest London and it's called the Tooting, Merton and Wimbledon Railway. It has no fewer than three abandoned stations, kind of, and you can follow most of it on foot. Now, if you know your geography of south-west London, and why wouldn't you, you'll know that Tooting, Merton and Wimbledon are right next to each other. If you don't, well, Tooting, Merton and Wimbledon are right next to each other. This was kind of an odd railway. It wasn't very important in itself, but what was important was how useful it was to other railways. Let's look at the old Tooting, Merton and Wimbledon on a map. It formed a kind of lasso shape, encircling Collier's Wood and South Wimbledon, with the ends meeting at Wimbledon Station and Tooting. It linked three railways together. There was the Wimbledon to West Croydon line, which is now part of the Tramlink. There was the London, Brighton and South Coast Railways line to Sutton, now part of Thameslink. And there was the London and South Western Railways main line, which ran through Wimbledon and is now operated by South Western Railway. The line was opened in 1868, but actually was considered so handy that the London and South Western Railway and the London, Brighton and South Coast took it over jointly before it had even opened. The London, Brighton and South Coast thought it was so handy that they actually named two of their passenger locomotives after Tooting and Merton. Apparently this habit of naming their locomotives after places on their railway could be quite confusing for Victorian passengers who mistook the names for destinations. The railway had five stations. There was Wimbledon, of course. There was Hayden's Road. There was Tooting Junction, which was later moved and renamed to just Tooting. There was Merton Park. There was Merton Abbey. You could argue that there was a sixth station, which was Streatham, where the Tooting, Merton and Wimbledon railway connected with the line to Sutton. Now, as you've probably figured out if you know your railway map, not all of the line is abandoned. The section from Wimbledon to Streatham via Tooting is still very much in place, now part of the Thameslink service. Here's a little picture showing how the line maps onto a modern, uh, map. The line that still exists is marked in purple. The closed section is in orange. Hayden's Road was originally opened as Hayden's Lane, with an E, but was renamed in 1889. It's never been a particularly busy station, I mention it mostly for the sake of completeness. Now let's talk about the abandoned bits. Tooting Junction lay just west of the current Tooting Railway Station and marked the point where the two strands of the railway diverged. In 1894 it was determined that the station was getting too much traffic. So it was recited to its current location, and the old location was reserved for goods trains. You can still visit the old location. This footbridge, which is now part of a slightly scuzzy footpath, was originally the station footbridge. And from the footbridge you can very clearly see the old platforms, which now have flats built on top of them. I think in London you basically have to guard any empty space 24-7, because if you don't, someone will build a block of flats on top of it. So now we get onto the abandoned track, which is the interesting bit. Or I think so, anyway. You can actually walk really rather a lot of it. The section immediately after the divergence has been built over, but there's this unusually narrow park in the back streets. This forms part of the track bed. At the end of that, the track bed continues. It was turned into Merrington Way, a road. And here, next to the KFC, we come to the site of Merton Abbey Station. There's nothing really to see of Merton Abbey, which is unfortunate. This area used to be quite industrial. Incidentally, one of the businesses based here for a time was Triang, which made model railways. One old industrial centre that is still visible is the old silk printing works, where a market is held. Merrington Way continues after the roundabout, but you can't follow it because there's no footpath. Instead, you have to cut through the side streets in an area that became known as Nelson Fields. It gets its name from the fact that this was where Lord Horatio Nelson was having his fling with Lady Emma Hamilton at the now-demolished Merton Place. Emma referred to it as Paradise Merton, though I don't know if you'd call it that today. 
Merrington Way ends at Morden Road. Here again, the track bed has been turned into a footpath, which you can follow through a nature reserve. It comes out on this residential street. And this yellow house is quite interesting. This here is the old Merton Park station. This was still in use until 1997, when the Wimbledon and West Croydon line was converted into Tramlink. The station was replaced with a tram stop. And from here to Wimbledon, you can, of course, ride the tram. Although at the time of recording this voiceover, we were in lockdown, so, you know, don't do that while there's a lockdown, I guess. Over the first three decades of the 20th century, the Merton Abbey line became less and less used. First trams, then buses, then finally the underground poached a lot of passengers. And this section of line was closed to passengers in 1929. In 1934, for some reason, the link with the other line at Tooting was cut. The track was still mostly there, still in use by goods trains, they just cut the link off. Which seems a little odd to me, you'd think it would make sense to at least retain the track, just in case, but apparently not. Over the following years, the goods traffic also started to dwindle. Some of the industries closed, some moved away, and some chose to send their wares by lorry instead. In 1975, British Rail gave up and closed the line completely. The rails were lifted, which at least gave archaeologists a rare chance to excavate the site of the medieval Merton Priory, which the line ran over. I mean, it ran over the site, not the archaeologists. In 1988, Thameslink opened and revitalised the section from Streatham to Wimbledon and beyond, and to this day is proving that, while it's not much of a line, it's still pretty handy to have. Hello all, I hope you enjoyed this encircling video. If you did, please do hit the like button and subscribe and hit the bell icon for more. I would like to thank my splendid donors for helping to keep this crazy train on the rails, and I'll see you all again very soon. Cheerio.